happen. So I was very serious about my coffee. Can I have it here? And my table is still in the making. It's coming. It's on. They've ordered it. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put a table here. Put a chair. So if I see any eyes dozing off, I'll call your name. Just come forward and take a shot of coffee. Okay. It's a, like an espresso shot. Can I have this down? Having can you put this down? So this has been ordered for you. I want to help you be awake, even naturally. So when you're awake here, you can sleep in the storm. What does storm mean? Yeah, any problem you have in life, then you'll just be sleeping there. Because um, I told you, I had a dream many, many years ago, the Lord showed me, and he showed me there were people in the shallow water and there were people in the deep water. And people in the shallow water were drowning, but people in the deep water, the water was holding them and they were floating. And what does the water represent? It represents the word. That means someone in their life, when the awareness of the word is less, the word is less. So the problem comes and the problem is greater. So they are drowning. But when the awareness of the word is greater, that means you come here every day and you're receiving the word. And what happens in the problem? The word is greater. The water is greater. I saw very few people in the deep waters. And they were lying on the water and the water was holding them. They were floating. Okay? So the awareness of the word is getting greater in you. Okay? Uh, I like the testimonies I wanted to talk about. Uh, remember last week, what are we doing? What were we doing? Your word is? Can we have that up? And remember I gave you an illustration of Frenny. I'll warm them up quickly to show you. Frenny, come up. Maybe you can remove your heels. So otherwise, she'll be taller. So can I have Alistair to my right? Alistair is not here? Yada. Yada was to my left. He represented in Christ. And Alistair. Sunil, can I have you to my right? So, uh, so Sunil represents in Adam. Alistair is going to represent in Christ. Okay? So, come, Frenny. There are two realms in this world. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. Okay? So, everything I've realized before, when I didn't know Jesus, right? I was born in a Hindu family. I raised up. I did everything because my mom told. And pretty much in all of, in this room, if you're here, we all did things because our our parents told us, we never ever question things for ourselves. And then I told you, there came a point when I began to question things. And that's when my eyes were opened and I found all the truth in the word, in the, the Bible. Okay, so simplicity. There are two rims. The cross is the, is the breaker of you coming out of one rim, darkness, into another rim. Okay, so I told you, he represents Adam. I know for English sake, but I'll say there are two mans. Two mans. One man, Adam, and the second man, the Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. Because he came to fix all the mess that the first Adam did. So why is there, if anyone questions, why is there, before when I came to the Lord, I always wondered if God's in, God is in control, why is there shit in the world? Why do bad things happen? And then I realized it doesn't look like God is in control. It looks like somebody else is in control. I was very right. I found all the answers in the Bible. Why did sin and death come into the world? One man, Adam, sinned. Because of his sin, sin entered the blood. I told you, first thing you get sick or anything, doctors will say, first thing, go and do blood test. Because in your blood is everything. Your genealogy is in the blood. But how did it come from genealogy? How are things coming from your forefathers into your blood? Because it's in the blood. Sin is in the blood. So one man, Adam, sinned. He ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. Consciousness of right and wrong. In other religions, they call it karma. All other. Okay? And man, innately, his conscience will condemn you. Whether they are children, whether they are young, growing up. Innately, you know, you have a sense and a consciousness of right and wrong. Kids also have it. Where did it come from when the parents didn't teach them? It comes from this. It comes from the fall. So Adam sinned. And because Adam sinned, Sin came into the world. And because of sin, death came into the world. So any type of, for one, it's financial debt. For one, it's relationships. 
dying, death in relationships. For another one, disease. It's death, but it's all form of manner of death. And so now because Adam sinned, sin is in the blood. And now everyone born of Adam is a sinner. And because he's a sinner, he does stupid things. Because sin is in the blood, that's where diseases and all of this comes from. Okay, and God's children, you were one. You were not one, but you, you had a relationship with the father. That relationship was broken because of sin. And so now what does a father do because his children have gone away from him? We live in a world where bad things are called good. The good parameter is something else only. <clears throat> good, good parameter has to be seen through the word. To you, it might be good, but in God's light, it's not good. Okay, so we live in a world where bad things are called good. And so now how does the father bring his children? And this realm is controlled by the devil. I told you, here the previous sermon, I talked about how the fall happened. God said, don't eat out of this tree. If you eat out of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, death is going to come into the world. And so Adam didn't listen to the father's voice. He listened to the devil's voice. The devil goes and tempts Adam and says, no, did God say, uh, you know, eat out of this tree? No, no, if you eat out of this tree, you will be like God. Please go and eat. And so what does Adam do? He does not listen to the father's voice. He listens to the devil's voice. Whoever you listen to, that one's slave you have become. And so because he partook of that tree, sin entered the world. And because of sin, death came in. That's why people die. So before Adam, before, people were living for a thousand years. Then gradually, death started coming in. And now maybe 100, 120, whatever max. But death is abnormal. It's abnormal. It was never God's heart. And so now God's children have gone away from him. And now how does the father bring about order? And so then the death came in the world. It didn't only come to man. Through man, it came to creation also. Death came to creation. And so there you have the disorder. The lion eats the bear. The lion eats the lamb. All of that is disorder. Lion eating human. All of that is disorder. Okay. And so now the father sends second Adam. Jesus. He's called the second Adam. He comes. The word is spoken from years and years and years. Jesus comes. That seed comes into Mary virgin birth and Jesus comes to fix the disorder that Adam has done and so now sin is in the blood so how does one get redemption from sin by killing animals they still do it in various cultures because innately I was reading in some uh, villages in India they also do child offerings why because they, they think innately man knows that blood needs to redeem but it's still tainted with sin it is true that blood needs to redeem, but not your blood. It needs divine blood. And so Jesus comes, second Adam. He goes to the cross for all the sins that you and I have done. And he goes and takes the payment. And after he dies and he rises again, Jesus said that I am the door. The door that leads to another world. That leads to the order. And those who believe in me, he said, now your sins are completely forgiven. And because now he took your sin... So he took all the crap that you've done, like basically all the mess that I had done. He goes and says, you know, father, let her go free. I'm going on her behalf. That's what he did for you and me. And then through his, what he's done on the cross, I say, Jesus, forgive me. I receive what you have done on the cross. He says, Priya, now I give you my righteousness. An exchange happened. And through righteousness, now in God's eyes, you have become a son of God. So from when someone came and told Freni about Jesus one day and says, hey, there's a way out of all of this mess, a way out of all of this disorder. Come on, let me bring you home. And so Jesus called the shepherd looking for his lost children, bringing them back to the father. And now Freni comes in Christ. Someone tells her about Jesus, what he did. And through Jesus, all her sins have gone. Now he's the second Adam. Now he's in Christ. Now in Christ, God does not look at Freni as a sinner. She is, has become a son of God. She was saying son, son. Why son? Because the spirit of the son has come into you. When Adam sinned, his spirit died. Now the soul is in control. Your mind, will, emotions is called soul. Remember we talked about a, a person is a three-part being. You have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. So what part is your spirit was dead because you didn't know Christ. Okay. Your soul is got messed up from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Or you go on Google and everything is cause and effect. You'll type something, sometimes ghee is good, sometimes ghee is bad. Sometimes chicken is good, sometimes chicken is bad. After two, three years. Okay, it's just knowledge of good and evil. 
Okay, the soul got messed up and the body, your body takes notes from your soul. Okay, and so man learned to die. Now in Christ, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You have become one spirit. Now what part of you is getting saved? Your soul man. Okay, can we quickly have this word up? Can I quickly have... Beloved is... Are you awake? Can I quickly have Galatians 4.19? We will go slow because I'm more interested in you getting understanding. Okay, through understanding, if you get understanding, you'll never fail. I always mugged up in school. My cousin knows. Through my childhood, she used to be my teacher, my cousin Pitto. Okay, so she used to come before and she used to not come for the unit test and not only for the final exam. For the, that happens once a year. And so if she came, my trust was in her. Like she will teach me, I will pass. And if she was busy, I don't know how I was going to pass. But I would, I didn't have time to understand. So I just mug it up one day before. One day before, I just like ratto, like a parrot. And then what happens when you mug it up? The next day on Monday, if your exam is on a Monday, on a Tuesday, you'll forget everything. Okay, you'll forget everything on Tuesday because you didn't understand it. You mugged it up. But he who understands, even today, you will remember. Because understanding. So the Bible says the seed falls on different types of soil. Hard soil, soft soil, by the wayside. The seed is called the word of God. He's saying, so the devil is after the seed, that word, to put it out. He said, but he who has understanding, the devil cannot take the seed away. So what am I doing? What are we doing in Beloved? trying to create you so that you understand why death came into your life in the first place. Death came in because of sin. Hey, but now all of you, you've been redeemed. In If you are in Christ, if you've received what Jesus did on the cross, you've become a son of God. Now, death should no longer touch you, even in finances. Okay, and what does it say here? My, ch my little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Go ahead. I would like to be present. Okay, so Christ is getting formed in. So what part is Christ getting formed in? Your soul man. Your mind. That's where Jesus says, no, I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in you bears much fruit. And then he goes about what's abiding. Abiding means what his word says. Please get it in you. A lot of Google says. A lot of the world wisdom is there. Even in dating and relationships. Go and live with that person and all of this is from the world. It's not. It's not in the word. If you don't begin a relationship with faith, it will not stand. There are so many I've counseled relationships where they went and did everything by the world and then the first year they, they divorced. It didn't work because it's wisdom of the world. We take God's wisdom. You begin by faith when things get rough. It's not a union of two people. In the kingdom, marriage is a union of three people. The Lord is in the center of it. He is the one who's holding everything. So here, when Adam messed up, he started listening to the devil, right? And so all that Freddie had in this realm, when she didn't know the Lord, was all the counsel, the wisdom, the understanding that came from the world. And now that you're back home with your father, your father is teaching you new things. And he wants all of your life and all of your soul with his words. And where are you going to get his words from? From your friends who don't know Jesus? You're going to get it from the Bible. Read the Bible. It is full of God's wisdom. One of the wisdom, I'll, I'll show you one of the things. You want to hear about finances and this? What was the curse that fell on Adam? Can we have Genesis 3? Genesis 3 was uh, 12. I'm quickly going to read it. Genesis 3 verse 12. Our tech team has a lot of increase on it. They are blessed. Because of them you are blessed. See this. Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Adam listened to Eve and he ate of that tree that God had said no. Go ahead. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Okay. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. 
on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life this is the snake and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel go ahead to the woman he said i will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception that's why labor pain came nine months when the child is in your womb i told you we have a testimony of one of our doctors who went into labor without pain there was no pain only the doctors were refusing and she's a doctor and she was like no i've been redeemed from this so i'm not going to have pain i'm going to give her and because she was a doctor she checked herself in and the baby came she didn't have labor pains i will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you okay see this and to adam he said because you have heeded the voice of your wife you have eaten from the tree of which i commanded you saying you shall not eat of it cursed is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life but both thorns and thistles thistles it shall bring forth for you at and you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return so what was the curse that came on eve uh, on adam and mankind that means you'll have to slog it out that means you will work a lot and you'll get little money and listen that is the curse and then you come to christ and god teaches you restful increase that means it's not curse in my life i've seen that it's not hard earned money i don't like to say i earned it hard no i earned it smart i earned it by grace it comes from the lord i learned to tithe i tithe 10th of everything that i made it goes in many digits and i gave it to the lord's work also but god taught me through wisdom through his ways so every time busyness came in too much i stopped i said no when god gives it it's different i've learned i've learned it and how can i say no only when i see it in the word because we live in a world where work is glorified busyness is glorified it doesn't come from the kingdom god wants you to have a good life time for him so he'll never give you something that takes you away from him only why will he do that no relationship how many fathers in your own household you want your children to just have time with you and they're constantly out and you're like come and just sit with me how many of you want that how much more your heavenly father okay and so you'll learn to discern that that means it's restfully increase i have worked at it with all everything that i have but it's restful increase sometimes it's a stretch but it'll lead to peaceful waters okay so are you in adam if you all have received jesus in your life are you in adam so you're out of curse the minute adam sinned curse even came on the whole world it came on the land everything and now through he pulled you out of adam into the second adam you become one spirit with him so she freddy now christ is getting formed in her soul even as she starts listening to her father's words and through that it's going to reflect even in her body and in everything that she does all the promises of god are yes and amen in and when you're living in christ it's not your righteousness it's not your works you're out of the karmic realm do good get good do bad get bad we came out where because of what he did and his goodness now i am i am righteous in christ i am the righteousness of god in christ okay so quickly we are going to go now to get my pdf again beloved is awake so today we are going to talk about becoming a partaker of his divine nature say i am a partaker of his divine nature yeah Christ is in you and because he is in you his spirit is in you it's giving life to your mortal body why mortal you know the minute i got born again i came to know what jesus did of course i was supernaturally healed and not just once multiple times things left my body things that didn't have cures it left my body i started renewing my my mind to what my father says what jesus says about me but everything in me knew that today i'm righteous you're right with god not by what you do but because of what jesus has done that is your foundation because all the promises of god are attached on 
His righteousness. I have had friends who've had some accidents or things and they're Christians on the outside. And then they say, how does Psalm 91? But it didn't work because all the promises are contingent, contingent. And they become yes and amen because of his righteousness. So you go deeper in their lives and you talk to them and they don't know that they're righteous because of what Christ did. They really think they're righteous because of who they are and what they're doing. And so you can quote all the promises and they're ineffective because the promises are held together. All the promises are yes and amen. That means they're working because this person knows that he's right in the father's eyes because of what Jesus has done. When we stand in his righteousness, then we don't throw stones at others also because we know we stand in his righteousness. You're understanding what I'm saying. Okay, where was I? Okay, friend, you can sit. I'll let them sit for some time and then I'll have to calm them up. Were you sleeping, standing? No, he wasn't. You can sit there. Okay, see this quickly because I want to go ahead. I told you truth is offensive. Jesus said, eat my, take my flesh, eat my blood, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And people didn't understand it. The Pharisees were all around him. And so what is happening? They are like, we can't understand you, we leave. And then Peter and the rest of the gang, they also didn't understand. But they stayed with Jesus because Jesus said, we know that you are the Messiah. We don't understand what you're saying, but you have the words of eternal life. And where will we go? So that means when truth comes to you, there are two types of people. One, the truth effect hits you and you cannot handle it. But truth will always remain the truth and say you still keep on walking with the Lord you know what like this truth came I it's I cannot understand it but I choose to trust you that you are speaking to me and then in time Peter and all of them understood what Jesus meant yeah even in beloved I told you we have eldership trust that they are the overseers of your soul that even when you don't understand it but you know what father that they see something that I may not see and that I'm just going to trust and going to walk this out yes Okay, and so let's go ahead. We talked about this. Go ahead. Partakers of his divine nature. So you all want to know, become one with God's nature. Is God poor? He's not poor. There are streets of gold. Jesus is rich, so I am rich. Jesus is divine health. Is there sickness in heaven? I grew up with like, God is giving you something to teach you a lesson. Imagine a parent going over the child's legs to teach you a lesson. Yeah, if you don't, you'll never ever do that. Why do you think God will do that to you? No, that's erroneous teaching that comes from the devil. Heaven, there is no sickness, there is no death. So where is he going to give you something that he only doesn't have? He is life and life in abundance. Jesus came and said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. So anything bad that happened in your life, death, any, anything is not from the father. It comes from the devil's kingdom because that's where death is. Okay, now see this. So how do you become partakers of his divine nature? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What does godliness mean? God likeness. Say I'm made in the image of God. Lion ka bacha will be dog. Huh? Lion ka bacha will be? Dog ka bacha will be? God ka bacha will be? So you are growing up to be? God. God likeness. That means his nature in you. Divine nature in you. It's normal. When Jesus was walking in this world, he was very abnormal. Abnormal to the world people. In his kingdom, he was very normal. This is what we do and that's what uh, the word Christian means what? Christ-like. And it was a mockery word. In the Bible, there's only two places for the word Christian. It was a mockery word given by the other people to them because they were doing the same things like Christ. They're laying hands on the sick. These people are coming out of sickness. What is happening? Yeah, everything multiplied after the seed. You put an apple seed, you'll get apples. So Jesus is called the seed. The father sent him. He died. When he was buried, you and I were buried with him. When he rose again, we rose again with him. The second seed came and through him, we become all sons of God, doing the same thing like him. So Christ is getting formed in your soul man. Okay, see this. 
through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust that means literally what this means is see this rem tells you if you go you sit with some doctors or anything it will tell you at this age this will happen at this age this will happen and that's all death and then god is saying hey when you take my promises now because you're not in the first adam you're in the second adam in the last adam so now your laws have changed it's like superman on this world and so the word says that all of these things should happen to you and that's when we talked about how jesus says my word is truth sanctify them that means separate them from the world the corruption that is in the world by your truth and so how do you separate that means that death and sickness or whatever doesn't touch you it touches everybody but it's not coming to you it says through the promises so when i had rheumatoid arthritis what do i have to do doctor say no cure you don't need this don't need that and then one day i just became single minded i said this is what the world says but your word says i'm a new creation i'm in christ as you are jesus so am i in this world now your spirit lives in me it's not in my nature to be sick and what happened i became single minded about who i am this is not positive thinking you have to be in christ you have to receive what jesus did on the cross for you that's how because these all promises are yes and amen because of his righteousness not positive thinking and nothing will happen if you keep confessing it because his righteousness because he took my sin away so if sin is only dealt with how can death be in my life and what does man do man looks at your standing from the flesh so they judge each other righteous by the flesh outside pray you did this pray you did that so they're judging righteousness your standing based on what you do is god judging your standing based on what you do the father just sees you either you're an adam if you're an adam you're a sinner if he sees you in christ you're a son of god he's not looking at outside he's looking at inside so how do you discern your standing from your position you judge all things from your position and so what happened i became one with my father's words the world is saying something else the doctor is saying something else but father i'm choosing to become one with what you are saying the promise was what by his stripes i'm healed i'm a new creation i cannot have sickness in my body and so i'm becoming one with that and after one year that things didn't happen the minute i became single minded about what my father is saying about me in 3 days everything left me okay and that's how we are living our life that's how you're going to see the promises of god you're going to see that divine nature come and become one with you say i'm one with my father okay so let me read that again by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust he literally means i'm going to separate you from that so say this is in health say in finances also the word says jesus says for your sake i became poor poverty is a curse he said i went on the cross i became poor so that you through me will become rich you through me will become rich it's in your nature there's no poverty in heaven it's part of the curse through your nature you'll be a life giving spirit what is a life giving spirit life giving spirit means god's heart for you say i'm a life giving spirit god's heart for you is to be a blesser it's one thing that someone blesses me and i'm very happy when i get like freebies and everything but it's another thing how many know that a king is not getting blessed but when a king walks he is blessing that means even suppose a beggar was on the road and if a king walked king is not going to give charana when the king puts his hand in his pocket and he gives some something to the beggar what is he going to give he is going to give abundance you know in our culture before when i didn't know christ i used to go into idol worship and as to give coins i told i brought one correction in my family once when i saw my extended family doing that i said you treat your own gods like beggars you're giving charana how is he and then she didn't like what i said got offended but i said open your eyes what are you doing how are you treating your own what you call gods god is rich he doesn't live in man made idols 
I like the post that someone has put. How can how can creation create a God? God created you. How can you create God? So we worship God in spirit and in truth. He does not live in man-made idols. When my dad passed away, I had a photo of him. But imagine if my dad was alive and I kept talking to the photo. My dad would come and say, excuse me, I'm alive. I'm not in a photo. Talk to me. All of these things were before when I started questioning idol worship and all of this in our country, what we were doing. Okay, and that's how I came to know that one day I just looked up and I said, tell me the truth. Who, who made the sun, the moon, the stars? And Jesus showed up. And I thought he's a white God, Gora God. You know, who is he? And then I, I went deep in the Bible and I read and I was like, whoa, he is the one who made me. And this is what I'm talking about. One man messed up, sin came. Second man, Jesus, came to fix all the disorder. And so when I had disease in my body, that is disorder. That is disorder. Relationship, death is disorder. And so what does God do? You come to Jesus broken, whatever you came with. And then you come and then Jesus brings in order. So disease going away is order, relationship getting fixed, or you getting a new person God add attaching to you, is order, right? Finances getting fixed is what? Order. So God came, Father comes into your life to bring in order. Just know it's order, okay? Peace means what? In Greek, the word peace means order. Peace, be still, means order in your life. And Jesus said, I am peace. I've come to bring in order. So right now he's saying to everybody, I am peace. Receive what I have done so that I can come in and bring my peace into your life. That means bring in order into your life. Okay? See this. So what does theos mean? You become partakers of his divine nature. Divine means dirty, God-like. Manifesting the characteristics of God's nature. Go up. What does nature mean? His divine nature, inherent, na inherit, inherent nature, origin, birth, inner nature, the underlying constitution or makeup of somebody. Oh, I love this. Beloved is awake. The Bible talks about, okay, in Ezekiel, that those who receive what I have done, my seed is in them. My seed is in them. Do you have to tell an apple seed what to do? You go and talk to the apple seed every day. You put the apple seed in the ground and you say you will become an apple. How many of y'all have done? The seed has in it everything in it to become an apple. The minute you got born again, you're born of the seed of God. Everything in you is taking after that seed. So can I go and tell an apple seed become a chiku? Will the apple seed become a chiku? No, the apple seed will become an apple the holy spirit is there in your life to tell you what that you are a son of god that you're righteous in christ he's not going to tell you anything else he can't tell you you're a sinner because god is not a sinner you're understanding what i'm saying when the father sees you how does he see you either you're in cry in adam or in Christ, man has a problem. He sees you from outside in. So he'll judge your standing according to your flesh. You do something messed up, he'll say you're in Adam. You do something nice, he'll say you're in Christ. That is man's problem, not God. When God sees you, if you received what Jesus did on the cross, you become a son of God. And now the Holy Spirit is convicting you of righteousness. Will constantly always tell you that you're right in Christ. Get up and walk. Okay, so let's see that. What does destruction mean? Corruption? Destruction. Pathora. Decay, rottenness, decomposition, perishableness. Something that is of death. Corruption that is in the world. Go ahead. I thank, I, you know what, I want those two illustrations. So can we just sit here if you don't want to stand? Huh. So you can stand here, come Freni and Yada. You can take chairs and sit, so it's better you have it. It's easier for me to explain. Okay, what does Philemon 1.4 say? I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective 
by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So how are you getting all the promises of God? Yes and amen, right? They are in Christ. You are blessed with all spiritual things in the heavenly places in Christ. Quantum physics also proves now. They went and did a study of the light. And light is like two vibrations, two. But it's funny that in the Bible it says God spoke, light be. And it's two. It is. Quantum physics will also prove that Jesus, this, the Bible is real. So it says, how are you making every good thing effective in your life? That means all the promises, yes and amen. What does God want you to do? Start acknowledging all the promises what are in Christ. You're becoming one with everything. Yeah, his words abiding in you. Get his words abiding in you. Then everything wrestles. It comes and you're like, Jesus, when am I going to see my healing come? When am I going to see my healing come? And that's the time when you become one. I don't care what the world says, what the report says. Father, you said it's not in my nature to fall sick. You just become one with that. Okay? You're understanding what I'm saying. Romans 8, 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. What does it mean led by the Spirit? That word led in Greek means dominated. That means there are two people. Remember God talks about the wind, the storm came and there were two people. There were two people. One heard God's word, the wind, the storm came and he didn't do. That means he's just a hearer of the word. But when the situation come, he doesn't apply it only. Doesn't apply the word. And he's saying that this man fell or sank. This is like a man who built his house on the sand. But the wind and the storm came to the one who is now in Christ. And this one stood on the word. That means stands. That means he is a doer of the word. What is the doer of the word for you and me? It's just not forgetting. In the time of trial, don't forget who you are. Learn to sleep in the storm. Learn to rest when everything is telling you, do something about it. And then you just rest. No, Father, I thank you. It's already done. This is under my feet. And then what happens? That thing changes into who you are. It was like that when mom... I got the scare of the cancer report, right? Everything says she's got cancer in her body. And everything came to tell me, fight it. Come on now, let's do something. And then I, I told you God's word was so sharp to me. And he says, who told you there's something to fight? Who told you there's something to fix? There's nothing to fight. There's nothing to fix. And so I said, mom, I said, this is wrong. I don't believe this report. We're in the new, we're in the second Adam. And so nothing can touch us anymore. And I told you, we did the test again. And I told Jesus, as a dude in such a way, in my whole family, you're glorified. And that test came on Good Friday. It was negative for malignancy. Okay, but how do you fight? So there is corruption in the world. But how do you separate yourself from it? Like this is touching other people. It cannot touch my family. Because I'm not in the first Adam. I'm in the second Adam. You are in Christ. And at one point, you'll have to stop looking at the way the world is seeing things, doing things the way they do their finances, the way they work. Work is glorified. I was talking to somebody at work and he was so happy to be busy. So happy. And I was like, I don't want to be in this world. I didn't tell him that. I don't want to be that you don't have time to answer your phone. That's not, it's busyness is glorified. And you don't want that. I said, I don't want any part of this. And I was so happy to be, they made fun like you're a designer. I said, yeah, I'm a designer. I get paid so much for just not going and touching. Because they, they meant to make mockery out of it, but I took it as, yeah, I get paid just to pat. Yeah, please, it comes from my father. <clears throat> I do a lot of work. I'm just saying that we don't glorify busyness. In fact, for me, it's a flag. When I get too busy, I separate. I don't want it. I just, I'm, I'm maybe go and re-talk things and I don't want all of these things. Because it doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. Okay? So... You are understanding, beloved is understanding. Okay, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Have you heard of God fearing being a good thing? God fearing person. I don't like God fearing. We are God loving people. We love our Father. God fearing, when I was in the world, when I was doing other things, there was a thing like if you partake the idols, that idol will come and do something bad. That was the understanding that we had. And so people are God-fearing because they do a lot of things because they fear if they don't do it, that God will come and whip them. Okay? And that was my fear as well, as to think like that. And then I came to know that does not come from God. God is a God 
loving person. That means he'll want to draw you to him. In fact, any relationship, you see even in your parents, when you know that you're completely forgiven and your father is never going to, he can correct you. But there is a freedom of like, hey, come close to me, I love you. Not fear. That child, no matter what he's done, he'll come and own up to the father because he knows there's forgiveness. But if there is fear in that relationship, the kids will not come. Because, because there, is a scare, uh, there is a fear of getting whipped. You're understanding what I'm saying. Okay? See this. <clears throat> it says here, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Go ahead, Galatians 4. Now I say to you that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Ambani's kid, when he was small, will Ambani give him all things? Because he's like a slave, he doesn't know. So even I've seen in the kingdom, God teaches you. I've realized when there was a time in my life and God gave me very little. And then he saw what I did with the little. How I was with that little. And then I chose and I multiplied that little. And so now, to a good steward, he'll give you more increase. Parents, good parents will anyway do that. Okay, how much more your father? Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law. That means this karmic lem that we were living in. That we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through, heir of God through Christ. Say, I'm a son, not a slave. I remember once the Lord showed me, if anything makes you a slave, it's not of me. If anything makes you a slave, it's not of me. Means your work could be relationship, could be anything. A Netflix series, how many were the tutu me me going on? I'm just saying, if anything makes you a slave, it's not of me. That means, as a son of God, he'll always teach you to rule over things. You're not bound by things. You're not bound by the things that you're doing. Oh, I need the coffee and without the coffee, I cannot. No, if anything makes you a slave, God will always teach you freedom. That means you are free. You're understanding what I'm saying. Okay, say I'm a son. I'm not a slave. Okay. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then heir of God through Christ. I'll explain. Go ahead. It's over? Wow. <laughs> so how are you becoming partakers of the divine nature? Huh? Through all the promises of God. Open your Bible. I still remember the days when I got saved. I don't want to tell mom because she'll think I'll get converted and all this. But imagine I knew someone who's talking to me. It's so real. It was going against everything that she's ever taught me when I was growing up. But I just knew that the Bible is real. And I knew that it has promises. Because once I had a dream, I remember asking Jesus. I said, uh, you know, I have this desire. But it's not a want. Uh, it's not a need. It's a desire. And is there any promise about desire? And in the dream, this lady came and said, read Psalm 37. I was just new in the Lord that time. So I got up in the morning, I opened up Psalm 37 and it said, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I was like, wow, the father is so loving. He is so loving. And so I knew that the, that I just knew that the Bible is God's word. Like if I want God's voice and God's opinion about it, not my opinion. Today, there's a lot of opinion. You can have an opinion, the, the sun is blue. And it really doesn't matter because that's your opinion. What will matter is what is the truth. So always be after the truth. I always say if you're a person of truth, then Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So if you want truth, then ask. 
then truth will come. But then truth may not be, it'll go against every grain that you've ever believed in. And so be open, then you ask for truth. But then the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so what happened? The truth came to me and I had to be open to receive the truth. And then I saw, I started taking the promises of God and I knew that I'm in another realm, that Jesus is God, that the father is so simple and he wants to talk to his children. He came to give life and life in abundance. He came to bring order into your lives. And so at every point, you'll have two voices in your head. One voice comes from the world, comes from everything that the world thinks is right, everything, the ways of the world, the patterns, and that voice can be a very big majority. Just because 100 people are saying yes to something doesn't mean it's God's voice. And then God's voice. And how do you find God's voice? His voice will never go against his word. So if you get his word in, you'll know his voice. And so I had at some point to disconnect from what the world was saying to just receiving what my father is saying about me. And I might be just alone in that. But if you're one with the Father, he says that he's not alone. The whole kingdom is with you and backs you up. Okay? And so you become one with that voice. And now the same people probably who were against you, you will be the odd person out having that testimony, having that different life that the hundred others didn't have it. So how many of you want that? And becoming partakers of his divine nature. Okay? You know, uh, remember last week I said about judging somebody? People think smoking is in and all of this. this is on the outside because they judge someone standing by outside. The father doesn't see anything from the flesh. If you're in Christ, if you're in Adam and Adam is smoking, you're in Adam. And if you're in Christ and Adam is smoking, he's a righteous person in Christ smoking. That's how God sees it. Your standing is not from outside in. It's from inside out. And the more you know who you are, it's one thing to smoke. It's another thing to be an addict. A son will never be a slave. That means it will not rule over you. It cannot. That should be a question. Is this ruling over me? Why am I allowing it? It's the same like sugar. Is it ruling over me? What is it of me that it, it, it cannot? I cannot say no to this. No, a son is not a slave. You're understanding what I'm saying. So is God looking at you outside in? No. Man looks at us outside in, right? And standards of perfection. But when you're in Christ, the Father sees you accepted in the beloved, in Christ. You are understanding what I'm saying, okay? We're gonna go deeper in this. I just have one verse that we missed up. Can we go up? Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. It's what the Holy Spirit does. Go up. One second. Yeah, we missed this. Go up. No, no. Like this. Yeah. Yeah, go up. Yeah, I'm quickly going to take this. Yeah. Yeah, go up. Yeah, we missed all this. Go up. Yeah, I want to read this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the world was God. I remember even when I was in my old religion, people always said that Jesus came at this point, this, this, my religion came first and all. Then when I read the Bible, I was like, no, the Bible talks about right from Genesis, where God spoke. Jesus manifested himself at a certain point in time. But the word is existent right when God said, light be and light is. Okay, it says here, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. What is the word? The word, the word of God. This is the word of God. Okay, and God will not go against his word. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Light's nature is, you switch on the light, what will happen? Darkness will go. Darkness will go. It's in light's nature to repel darkness. That means when the father comes into your life, Jesus is called light. You become children of light. So it's in his nature that when he comes in, darkness will get out of your life. I only came to Jesus because I was sick. I was going to die. 
when I was nine, 18 years old. But when I came to my father, I give this illustration, right? Like if you lose your earring and you switch on the light, is the light only going to fall on your earring? The light falls on everything. So I came to him for a sickness and I came to know Jesus is God. I got healed, but I didn't realize I came back home to my father. And he, I may have come home because of sickness, but he came in to be my father. And then he came in and brought life in every area that was dark in my life. And he kicked out darkness because it's the nature of light to repel darkness. Where light is, darkness can't be. Now imagine you're born of him. You are called sons of light. So that means wherever you go, if anyone is doing anything dodgy, what will happen? It'll just get exposed. <laughs> It'll come up. If you go around sick people, they'll get healed. If you go around broken people, they'll get fixed. Because where light is, darkness cannot be. Things will get unveiled because it's in the nature of light to repel darkness. And your children of light, say I'm a son of light. And his light is in me. Okay, see this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now John came before Jesus. He was called to point that Jesus is the one. John the Baptist. This man came from a came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. This is talking about Jesus. And the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children, sons of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born. So when you receive what Jesus had done, you were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but born of, born of supernatural something happened. See, whenever someone sins, when someone does something bad, why do we have courts in the world? Where did this court system come from? Courts, normal courts, you go to the judge. Innately, man knows that something wrong, there has to be a punishment. And then you feel happy if someone is hanged. Because if they did something bad, you know that death is the highest penalty, right? Innately, man knows it. What about your sins and my sins? Where have they gone? If you go into dirty water and dip and come out, nothing is going to happen. It needs blood to redeem, right? And that's what happened. Our sins, somebody else took away. Jesus. He came, he died. So when Jesus went on the cross, he was a substitute for us. When Jesus went, I went, you went. When he was buried, I was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, we rose again. So now Jesus, after he rose again, he's saying, now those who receive what I have done, that means receive what I have done, thank God. Otherwise, you and I would have to go on the cross physically. That's what our payment for all our sins. But someone else went, died, rose again. So when we receive him, it says, by faith, they become one with me. When the father sees you, he sees you in Christ, blameless, spotless. Your sins have been absolutely forgiven, past, present, future. And now you're in this realm called grace. You're in a realm of righteousness. And righteousness leads to life. That's why... People are quoting promises, but they're not becoming yes and amen because if they don't know only and then the realm of his righteousness. They cannot be under works and expect the promises yes and amen. Your understanding. So the foundation, that's why here we are laying foundation. I know sometimes it goes like this and you feel what? I just wanted you to just come and hear it. Doesn't matter. I, my faith is that my words are spread on their life. They will do what they are meant to send out to do. So I speak in faith sometimes in your life. But this realm is his righteousness. All the promises are yes and amen in this realm. Okay? So what do you do? Open the Bible to find the promises. How many have you got a gift and you never open the gift box only? You all are there. Some. Some give those gifts to other people also. At least remove the name who it came from. If you don't like the gift. But your father gives you good gifts. On my birthday, please ask me what I want. Don't go and ask other people what she wants. Because sometimes it's gone wrong. Okay? Please ask. How many people on their birthday go and ask other people? On your birthday, please go and celebrate them. Word of advice. You know, on your birthday party, please don't be busy. You sh it is your birthday party. Why should you be serving? 
we are celebrating only that one time they, they, they clap and they say happy birthday to you. And then the person is the most busiest. On my birthday party, you all have all come. I make you only clean the house. Because it's my birthday, I will celebrate. Otherwise, why are you getting the cake? I told you what Beloved did on my birthday. Now they send me the bill the next day. They order the biryani. Now I'm, I'm, I'm better. Now I organize it. No, I don't. I let them, but I, I make sure I'm having fun. Even on your wedding, on my wedding, I'll make sure I'm, I am having, eating the food and enjoying it and I'm having fun. I'm not going to be shaking hands with 100 people. Shake my hand later on. Not at my wedding. Yeah, it's the time of celebration of the couple. Your birthday is your celebration. Don't forget that. So let other people work on your birthday and it's okay if the house is a mess. Get a maid to clean it. You're not the maid. This, this is wisdom. You become the maid in your house, your husband will see you as the maid. After some time, you're the queen of the house. Get the work done from somebody else. And in your time, one on one with your husband, just spend time with him. And then later on when he's gone, you clean up the house. When he's there with you, enjoy. This is wisdom. This is in the Bible only. Okay? See this. Quickly. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children, sons of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. God ka bacha? Is God running after his problems? If God runs after his problems, we're all in trouble. God is resting because it's already finished. The more you learn to rest, a king rests. You know, we got independence in which year? Are we going and fighting the British every time when we enter the country? Why? Because we already got... Jesus has already won the battle for you. So when the symptom comes, learn to rest. That is already done at the cross. Sorry, I'm in another realm. This sickness, if I was in Adam, it could affect me. I'm in Christ. I cannot have rheumatoid arthritis. So the word says sanctify and rest. That means I took that word. I said, no, this is mine. I'm a new creation. Your life is in me. It cannot touch me anymore. And so what happened? Sickness leaves. Now it doesn't mean don't take medicine. Please. Take medicine, get your insurance, everything. Please do it. It doesn't take away from faith. But have that word in you. God says only, don't let the devil pull out that word from you. So that's what you hold on to that word. And that word will bear fruit. Okay? The word became, that means what is unseen is becoming seen. The word of God became flesh. His word in me, that, oh, it's in my nature to have divine health. That word became flesh. And that whatever symptom on my body or sickness on my body left. His word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word and he became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. What does begotten mean? Born of him. Begotten means monogene. In Greek, monogene means one of its kind. The Bible says you are a new creation in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, the Bible says he is a new creation. The old has gone. That means all death in your life. If you had, all death is gone. The new has come and now all things are of God. You've come to fatherhood. In Adam, we were separated from the father. The devil we thought was our father and we listened to him. But the minute you receive Christ, you've come back home to your real father. Now you're under fatherhood. That means your whole life is fathered. Say my whole life is fathered. It's a finished work. Yes, you'll, you'll start seeing it. You'll start seeing fathering in the smallest things. Whatever testimonies we saw is fathering in the smallest things. Because he is a God of the little things. He's your father. Okay, see this. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, This was of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Psalm 180, 138 verse 2. For you have magnified your word above your... You have magnified your word above all your... God will never go against his. 
So sometimes I can look into your life. I can see the disorder. Why? Because his word is above his name. So we can see that means he'll honor his word. So I can give counsel or rishi or anybody. If you have the word, you can give that counsel in because God will not go against his word. How many know the king values his word? Everything in the world. You say zaban di hai. In the old times, this meant a lot. Zaban di. How could you go against his word? It was not written. Now it's written. In the old times, it was all about word. You go by word. And a man was honored because of his word. A king was honored because of his word. Now it's become loose. So, but we are just like our father. And father honors his word. That's why I always say you honor your own word. The devil will honor yours also. But you don't honor your own word. How are the kingdoms and all the other realms going to honor? You, on, you start by honoring your own, own word. That means I spoke it, I'll be there, I'm there. I'm honoring my own word that has been spoken. Okay? See this. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me except through, no one comes to the Father except through. That's why Jesus is called the door. So how do you come to the Father? You can go to the Father. Even somebody doesn't know Adam. But see, when you come to the father, is sin is on that person still. So even if the father wants to bless, he can't because sin. Adam did something stupid. Now the whole world is bearing the payment of it. So the way out, the father fixed it. I was the happiest when I found the Bible when I was young. Because I always thought, did God not do something about all the crap in the world? And then I was so happy he made a way out. Oh, he sent his son to fix all the mess. And so then through the son, we can come back into order in our life okay it's so simple to understand really matrix go watch the movie matrix it's all about the bible see this so what does it say john 16 the work of the holy spirit so what is the holy spirit doing in your life now frenny has come from darkness into light okay so now from bondage out of egypt into the promised land now the parenting has started here also there was parenting, but it was terrible parenting. It just led me to death. I, I did all the things what my mom, father, everyone said, and just I was going to die one day. And that's when I began to question things, right? Is it right? Because it went against every grain that I believed. And then I had to really question things. I started seeing nature, closest representation of her father. And I saw order in nature. The bird knows how to make the nest. Who taught it? The seed is doing exactly what it has to do. It's producing apples. It doesn't need my intervention. Intervention. So I came to know God is a God of order, not of confusion. And the biggest confusion was I have been told by my parents, all God, one God. Everyone is Priya. That one tree will give pineapple chikku sita fal. They told us there's all God, one God. At the end of the day, it's faith only, no? You go on a plane, you've checked his license. Is he even a pilot? No, it's not faith. That means we all use faith. It's not faith. It's in a name. You have a name? Why did your parents give you a name? Not just have random children. No names. Just. And then you say, come. My, my inheritance, my house will go to? Nameless. Why did your parents give you a name? Bab ka name kya hai? Hazar baap hai? Ek baap hai na? What makes you think God is Hazar name? My biggest rest was I found his name. It's not God's problem he has a name. It's your problem. You don't want a name because you want to control. I was in controlling. My aunt used to do all these pujas to control the guru and she'll tell me exactly what to do. Such a controlled life. And the minute I came to Christ, it was life of surrender and fatherhood. That father... I was driving my car and now I take the rest, side seat, you lead. And what a life of rest that I don't have to worry about my life, that somebody else is taking care of me. Fatherhood. You come out of just control and coming into a place of dependency on him. That when I can't see, I thank you, Father, that you can see. And what does Jesus tell us? Take no thought. Don't think because I'm thinking for you. How better to have somebody else thinking for you than you thinking about your own life? It's a life of rest. And so does God have a name? Yes, sorry, but he does. I was the happiest that I knew him and now he knew all about me and I could get to know him. And then through Christ, the name, 
the name above every name. He comes, you come back home to your father and he is teaching you order. And he's saying, yeah, I have a name and I gave you a name. And you can call me by name and I can call you by name. And I can have a relationship with you. Normal. And now he's saying, Priya, you learned all these things in the world. Now let me teach you my world, our world. And that it's not in your nature to have sickness. It's not in your nature to be a slave to money. I am not a slave to money. Money is a slave to me. I rule over money. I rule. That's where the tithe comes from. All of these things. And he taught me new things from our world. Kingdom world. Okay? That's why the kingdom living, you're back home with your father. It's fatherhood. It's parenting. And some things you may not like. But yield to your father because eventually it will lead to life. His heart for you is when he walks into your life, he wants to bring in order, life, rest in your life. And that's what beloved is also. I told you it's a school. It's not a church. You come here. God has told me I'm the overseer of your souls, right? The Bible says that. <clears throat> that means whoever is here, I'm supposed to walk in. If I see disorder, we are here to bring in order. Now certain things hurt and you don't like it. No, but we're transparent here. We want to bring in order. We want to bring in life because he wants to bring in life. Tomorrow he's going to ask me one day, what do, you, what do you do with all the people I put under you? And what do you do about this one? What do you do about that one? And then I'm accountable to your life. So I'm like, yeah, father, I did this. At least I've done this. And so we, we want that transparency. Yes, in beloved. And that's why we're very open. We come in, but a heart, if you don't trust me, you won't trust the Lord in me. So you need to really start trusting the Lord. And what is his heart? And my heart is that everyone's life bear fruit. And before bearing fruit, remember this year, the word was what? Pruning comes. You, the farmer stands in front of the crop and he prunes it. Prunes it. He clips certain things. And the clipping no one likes. But if he clips it and prunes it, that means it will bear a lot of fruit. My mom is a farmer, so she knows. I have one grape wine that is, doesn't have a farmer. It's not clipped. That grape wine has only leaves and less grape, no fruit, lot of foliage, like my uh, bougainvillea, it is just leaves, one, because I'm not the farmer, I have one, uh, one flower, three flowers, but the one that is under the stewardship of the gardener, that bougainvillea, you compare my bougainvillea, I don't know what he's putting in there, but it is all bougainvillea, more flower and less leaves, how many know that's order? And then you look at other bougainvilleas and you get irritated. But that bougainvillea goes through a lot of maybe clipping and pruning and certain water and all of that. And that's fathering. And so Jesus also in the Bible, it says, I am the wine. Go up. What does it say? Go up. Go down. No, no. Down, 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 down. Where was the, I, I, just find it. One John. Check it in the deck. It says, I am the wine. You are the branches. My father is the gardener. Allow the pruning. Allow the clipping. That means certain things so that yeah, what does it say here? I am the wine and my father is a wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. In other words, that is he lifts up so that and every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that what? That he may bear more fruit. So before more fruit comes, what happens? That means you are a person in your life, you are very comfortable in saying God has blessed me. I have fruit. He's pruning the one who, see this, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear. So it should be a sign, we're not saying that God has not blessed you. Yeah, you have. But now he wants to come and give you more. So before that more come, what happens? Pruning. This is not God whacking you. This is not God. That's been told in the world. No, God doesn't do with sickness and all. He doesn't have anything to give you. He doesn't correct you at all through anything that is of the death realm. He only corrects you through his word. That means a word will come. Someone has said it to you and you've not listened. And then God keeps sending other people to say it to you and you don't. And you think it's the other people. And then you come to know like it's the Lord telling me this and I need to do this. And pruning comes so that you bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you uh, unless you abide in me. Can a branch on its own without the trunk? Can, can it bear fruit? It will have to stay connected. So what we tell you, please come here and hear the word. Why? You go out, you hang out with Adam generation. 
and then you hang out with them, they give you counsel in your time of trial, you call them up and they give you all crap. And then you come and hang out with here, God's wisdom is very different. I told you when Rishi had the broker problem or something, I said, sorry, you spoke, he committed, it should be, it's righteous judgment, you stick to it. And then what happened? God changed the landlord's heart. And he, the landlord got up on him and said, you know what, I'm a good man, I want to be a provider. How can that happen? Only God can do that. But what happened, he didn't go in the world and take that counsel. He came to sons and we gave him different. We said, no, you're in another room. This is our counsel and we stand in it. And then he prayed, yeah, father, you will change his heart. And that, that's what happened. He woke up and said, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. That is the kingdom living. See this, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in me, the wine neither can you, can you bear unless you abide in me. I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. You know when the, I've seen some branches in the tree, when, when do you clip them? Remove them. It's almost like they're yoked in it, but they're not getting any life of the wine. It's not going in the branch. That means the node, no? There's something there. They're dried up. Why? Because everything is in the trunk. But how come it's not flowing in the branch? That's why I told you, renew your mind. It says, how are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means whatever the life is there in the wine, I'm saying, yes, Father, this is who I am. That's how the life from the wine is flowing into the branch. Beloved is awake. I'm closing in other exactly five seconds. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them up and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So you can be connected, but the words may not be in you. And he's saying, let the words be in you. You will ask what you desire and you, it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. That means the father is the most glorified when you bear fruit. God comes. If there is an area of your life, there is chastening. That means correction. Get excited because he's only coming in to pull you out of something. That means there's going to be sporadic increase. And that's our heart for you. Okay, go up. Finished. Finished. The Holy Spirit comes to bear, to convict you of sin, righteousness and judgment. Of sin because you do not. There's only one sin that every person in the world will get convicted. Have you received Christ or not? Bus. It's not what you did, what you didn't do. Have you received Christ? Because from one realm to another realm, it depends on if you've received what Jesus did on the cross for you. So the sin is... If you've received Christ, it's there, John 16. Okay? Then of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. So now, when Franny was here, the Holy Spirit came and says, Hey, Franny, you need a savior. Yeah, all the mess, everything is because of sin. But now how do you get sin out? Someone came and told her about Jesus. And so now from here, Franny comes out. The Holy Spirit has done that. And now he puts her in Christ. Now what does the Holy Spirit do? Go up. I tell you the truth, see this, the helper will not come, but if I depart, he will come to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me. Now of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Now constantly, Frenny is in this world, she's received Christ, she's not of this world. And now constantly the Holy Spirit will convict her, Frenny, you're righteous. Even if she did something silly, he'll just say, hey, you're still righteous in me, get up and walk. It's not in our nature. That's what he's, she's go he's going to do. Frenny, it's not in your nature to fall sick anymore. Frenny, I am rich, so you are rich. Come on, spirit of wisdom is here. We're going to teach you how to rule over money. You're not a slave to money. Money is a slave to you. We're going to rule over busyness. Okay, all of these things. He is going to teach you and of judgment because the ruler of this world. Who's the ruler of this world? When I was an Adam, the devil is the ruler of this world. You don't know it. He's there. You go out. Just look around you. I remember I was talking to an atheist once. I said, I want to convince you the devil is here. Just go out. He, he, he was just quiet because he knew what I was talking about. You're constantly dealing with sometimes why are bad things happening? Yeah, why are bad things happening? Who is in this world? Okay, see this. 
and the because the ruler of this world has been judged. So we are in this world, but because you're in the kingdom, the Holy Spirit is with you and he'll teach you how to overcome. See, I'm an overcomer. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take off mine and declare it to you. So what did Jesus tell me? Priya, it's not in your nature. He just told me truth. Now, what did I have to do? I had to just hold on to that truth. Yeah, it's not in our nature. And everything was coming to war. The pain was there. Everything was there. But I had to just be like, no, it's not in my nature. I'm in the second Adam. It's not in my nature to have any more death in my life. No more. It cannot touch me. Sickness is death. And then the more I held on to that truth, one day everything just left, disappeared, right? We are in this world, not of the world. Okay? And we're becoming partakers through his promises. That's what all the I am's are. We'll go more next week. Okay? For today, it's a close stand up. We're going to give a spiritual tithe. What's a spiritual tithe? It's a thanksgiving. Just the way you give your money tithe. A spiritual tithe, you're thanking the Father right now for everything that you heard, all the life that came, maybe something out of the word spoke to you. And what you're going to do, you're just going to thank the Father with it. You're going to thank Jesus. And guess what's going to happen with this? That means when you thank him, whatever was spoken, it will not get stolen out of you. And that word is going to get increased in you. That means it's just going to multiply like that seed. And it's going to bear fruit in your life. Okay, so everyone close your eyes. I want you to say, Father... I'm a son in your kingdom. Jesus, you are my high priest. And right now, I thank you. And I give you a thanksgiving of all the increase, of all the life, of all the understanding, of all the truth that came to my soul. And just thank Jesus for it. Come on, just pray in tongues to thank Jesus. I just thank you, Jesus, for it. And I thank you that you're multiplying it. Amen.